Welcome. There's been a lot of buzz surrounding Adobe Photoshop's generative fill, and for good reason. My favorite way of using it is not to create new parts of an image, but to actually use it as a retouching tool. And let me show you what I mean. So I have this image captured in main, and I'm just going to go up to the lasso tool. And let's say I have these people down here that, well, you know, I really don't want them in the image. They're drawing too much attention. So I'm gonna make a selection around them. I don't need to be very careful. I'm just gonna kind of go around them a little bit. Now, if I don't have the generative fill or contextual menu popping up, I can go up to edit and I go down a little ways and I get generative fill. And I go ahead and click on it and I get this box. Here's where I don't wanna type anything in. A lot of videos we see people will type something in to generate something unique. I'm gonna leave it blank and just click generate. And you can see at the top, it's you know it's going through their process here. And on the right side, we can see it's gonna create three different variations right now. So we just have to give it a second. And here it comes. And you can see right off the bat, it did a really nice job. And I can click on the three different options. And if we're looking right down here in that lower right corner, we can see the options. Now, if I go over to my layers panel and I click on and off, we can notice that it is on its own layer. And in fact, what it does use is a layer mask. We just have a layer mask that was from my selection and that works really well. Let's see if we can remove the schooner. But because I know I'm gonna do a little bit more here with the generative fill, I'm gonna go up to my window menu, come all the way down towards the bottom and click on contextual task bar and it adds this little bar that I can move around, but I can also hide it if I like. But I'm gonna just kind of leave it sitting up at the top right now. And right off the bat, it talks about subtract from mask, add to mask. It's not the genera fill yet, but with my lasso tool, I'm just gonna go around this schooner. And again, I'm not being overly careful, just giving it a little space. And now this bar says genera fill. Now it says deselect on the right. What I need to do is actually click inside that box. Again, I'm not gonna write anything here and I'm gonna click generate. And it just takes a second and it's gonna just, you know, we always have to have a little bit patience here to see what it does. The larger the file, the more pixels we select. Um, but it is only gonna generate a small portion. It's a little over, a thousand pixels. So if you want to do a very large image, you might have to use generative fill multiple times in smaller blocks. So as we can see, it did a nice job with that. I'm going to go ahead and throw this layer out for a second. And I'm going to try something a little bit different. You know, sometimes you'll see someone make a pretty good box here. And I'm going to just click inside there, click generate. And we're going to let it do its thing. And it's moving pretty quick here. And this is where I want to just show the potential of using a layer mask and how it generates a layer mask. We'll notice it did a really nice job removing the boat, but because of where I was working and what I had selected, I lost some of those kind of cool waves in there. I like these waves right here. So I'm gonna turn that back on. I'm clicking on my layer mask and white reveals, black conceals, but I wanna hide part of it. So I am on the black foreground color and I'm just gonna paint on my mask. So what I'm painting on right now is actually just my mask right there, and it's allowing some of those waves to come through. Now, if I go too high, I start getting the boat. So I'm gonna go Command Z. So it really did a nice job on this image. Let's take a look at a different image here. So I'm just gonna move this bar out of the way, and I can lose those properties. Well, let's take a look at how it does on a few different options. Now, I can use any selection tool. And in fact, if I chose to, I could feather my selection. I can modify it. Once I have my selection, I could always go up to, excuse me, you know, I can use some of the different tools just to modify my selection. So I have select, modify, I can expand it, smooth it, contract it, feather it. So we have some options there. So I'm gonna click in that little box, click generate. This shouldn't take too long. And I think it's gonna do a really good job removing this person uh, from this image, but just, you know, I have pretty good confidence in this one. And always just have, again, we have to have our patience and lo and behold, it kind of odd, it put a sign in there. I was not expecting that to happen. And you can see it's mimicking this. So let's throw this back out. 
And what happens if I try a little bit bigger area? And you know, I really thought it was gonna do a better job, but sometimes we just don't know. I might have to jump into some different selection tools because generative fill, every time you use it, it is gonna give us something a little bit different. So trying it a second time, and we'll just let it do its thing. It added a chair in that one, but this one did remove it. We can kind of see we have a few different options here. So, you know, that one is perfectly acceptable. It works well in there. You would never think there's a person. Let's try something a little bit more difficult. I think it's gonna struggle with this boat, primarily also because the house back here. So let's see what's going on. So I'm just gonna be, and I think because I'm going right through that house, maybe if I added the house to it, it might be a little bit better. I don't need the properties. Click generate. And it is a little bit of, well, we're gonna see what we get. What I've found, and we might have to do this on this one, sometimes I have to do it on top of each other. I'll do it one time, and then it might have an artifact or something appear that I need to retouch out also. So we'll, we'll just see here. Again, I'm a little nervous about this one. Well, it added something in there that really, <laughs> sometimes you do have to chuckle. It doesn't really belong in here. What happens if I go and try to remove this a second time? And this might be a scenario where we'll see what it does one time, but I may have to jump into more of our contemporary retouching tools, maybe spot removal or the clone stamp or the patch tool to finish the job. So don't be surprised. Wow, this one definitely is struggling on here. I'm not sure where this guy came from, but I could always add a new layer jump into the spot healing brush and let's just see what the spot healing brush does for me. And that's a pretty good starting point. I would still need to fine tune it. So again, don't be surprised if you have to edit it or work on it a couple times. My workflow is generally, I'm going to, if I'm gonna retouch something, I'm gonna try the smartest tool out there, which is the generative fill. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna go into the spot healing. And if that doesn't work, maybe the patch tool, maybe the healing brush, maybe the clone stamp, and I just work through the progression. So hopefully you enjoyed this introduction to generative fill and hopefully you enjoyed the video.